this is a distraction. People in our world are not suffering from overdose and spinach. They are suffering from malnourishment and being poisoned by overdosing in animal products and processed junk. We could start with maybe for somebody who doesn't know, I think most people don't do know, but if you could just explain briefly what are oxalates just to get started. Yes, absolutely. And, and thanks for, for having me on to talk about this because it does pop up and uh, it's just the newest kind of counter argument to eating healthy. And on one hand, it makes me laugh. On the other hand, it makes me cry uh, because it's just a lot of mythology. And uh, so it's great to be able to, to, to help people understand this. So I'm just going to go after this topic here. I, I woke up ready. Like, let's just let's just talk about oxalates and then we can stop talking about oxalates. So, so the reason people talk about them, right? Uh, is that one in 10 people in the, in the U.S. get kidney stones. And the most common type of kidney stone is an oxalate kidney stone. Now, also, fruits and vegetables, especially certain vegetables like spinach, beet greens, and chard, are high in oxalates. And so what some folks are doing is they're then drawing the conclusion, you're eating foods high in oxalates, one in 10 people get kidney stones, therefore you're going to kill yourself or you're going to get, you know, kidney stones because you're eating high oxalate foods. But let me ask you this, Juliana, do you think that one in 10 people in the U.S. getting kidney stones, that one in 10 people in the U.S. are juicing and drinking green smoothies? Yeah, no way, no chance. <laughs> Good point. No, actually, uh, and they've known this, like even back when I was in medical school, we we're talking 20 years ago, we were taught that the, what gives you a risk of kidney stones is dehydration and high intake of animal protein. Now that makes much more sense, right? Because definitely more people in the U.S. are overdosing in animal protein, are dehydrated, and that makes a lot more sense. So, you know, it's it's a false equivalency where people are saying, oh, you know, if you're eating high oxalate foods, you're going to give yourself these problems. So let's just talk about it. So yes, they're found in fruits and vegetables, mostly in, you know, the highest level is in spinach, as I said, beet greens, chard, um, and so when people make smoothies, a lot of times they use spinach. And so that's where the concern has come from. Um, but really, when it comes to diet, we don't actually absorb that much of the oxalates from our diet. Uh, very little of it ends up, we absorb it in our gut and then it'll come out through the urine. And, and the fear is if you have too much in your urine, it's going to crystallize into these stones, right? But they have actually done studies looking at this where they have increased the dietary intake by 25 times. And there was only just a mild increase in the urinary concentration. So not that much of it is coming from the diet. Now the body also creates oxalates as a byproduct of different chemical reactions happening. And so they've also studied this. What they did is they said, okay, if dietary oxalate could be causing, and dietary oxalate, I'm meaning what you eat, right? So if eating things high in oxalate might cause kidney stones, then we'll take people who get kidney stones and take all the vegetables out of their diet and see what happens. And you know what happened? Kidney stones went up. Yes. Wow. So why? Right? So I'm getting all sciencey with you so that people can really understand yeah. this. So when you eat lots of animal products, it causes your urine to be more acidic. And when your urine is more acidic, it's going to form more stones. When you eat lots of vegetables and fruits, your urine is more alkaline. And alkaline urine does not form as much stones. So in reality, people who eat more fruits and vegetables have less kidney stones, not more. And it's actually been tested and proven. And not just in these tests. I mean, I, you know, the reason you know who I am is because thousands of people all over the world have done our hypernourishment program, which is an overdose, an overdose in things like green leafy vegetables, right? And what happened? They reversed Diseases that should be incurable. Like for myself, I'm lupus free now, 17 years. I eat over a pound of greens a day, never had a stone. Uh, in fact, it healed my kidney issue. I had chronic kidney disease that went away because I started overdosing in nutrition. So if it really was the case that people eating enormous amounts of leafy greens would result in people getting oxalate overdose and stones, 
it wouldn't just be goodbye autoimmune disease. It would be goodbye autoimmune Hello Kidney Stone, right? It'd be my whole my whole community would be like, well, my arthritis is gone, but I'm bleeding in my urine. Right? <laughs> it is just not yeah. the case, right? I have not seen that. Over the thousands of people I've worked with, I can think of two people who've had kidney stones, which is actually more like the general population level, not like a, you you know you would you would see something different. So what we see in results is that actually. When people are getting kidney stones, they're on high protein, animal protein diets. They're dehydrated. They don't eat fruits and vegetables. Now, there was a case that triggered some of this. And, you know, the people who are, you know, pro keto, carnivore, they're always looking for ways to make it seem stupid to eat your vegetables, even though our own grandmothers knew vegetables should be eaten, right? So there was this one case where there was a woman who was morbidly obese. She had gastric bypass surgery. She was on tons of antibiotics. And she decided she wanted to get healthy and do a juice cleanse, which good on her, right? Yeah. Like this is probably the best decision she had made. And she went on a juice cleanse, primarily juiced spinach, and she got a kidney stone. And so they published the case that someone juicing and having spinach as her juice got a kidney stone, a one-person case, right? Yeah. And so then the one of the theories they proposed was the high oxalate intake precipitated this kidney stone. But here's the reality. I already taught you all the reasons why that's not the case. But there are certain things medically that can make you more likely to get a kidney stone. And one of them is gastric bypass surgery. So she had gastric bypass surgery, which raises her rate or her risk of kidney stone. She also had high levels of antibiotic intake. Now, the reason that's the case is we actually have a bacteria in our gut that absorbs and, and digests and gets rid of oxalates. It's called oxalobacter. And if you're taking in high amounts of antibiotics, you might have murdered and killed off some of that bacteria. And if you can't destroy oxalate, you're going to absorb more, which raises your risk of kidney stone. Interesting. So here's a woman who was high risk for kidney stones because she had totally mutilated her bowels through gastric bypass. You can tell I'm not a fan of that surgery. And was exposed to large amounts of antibiotics, and then she ate a bunch of spinach, and then she got a kidney stone. So is it possible if she had done kale instead of spinach, she wouldn't have had a kidney stone? Maybe. But chances are, at some point, she was already going to have it. And there are people who genetically are more prone to it. That's the other part of it, is there are some people who genetically, and they're very low percentage of the population. I actually talk about this in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease. I have a chapter about oxalates just because this topic won't go away. Yeah. I talk about all this data and detail for people who want to read it and have it for themselves. But um, there are people who are genetically predisposed, very low percentage of the population. And again, they found it's not related to diet, that they don't need to overdose of spinach to get stones. They're going to get them anyway. So really, that's not the issue. And, and the biggest thing I want to say about this before I breathe again is that this is a distraction, People in our world are not suffering from overdose and spinach. They are suffering from malnourishment and being poisoned by overdosing in animal products and processed junk. I won't even call it food, right? They're overdosing in junk that's killing them. I mean, the causes of death, the primary causes of death in our, in our world are caused by nutrition, heart attacks diabetes, cancers, autoimmune diseases. These are caused by chronic malnourishment and eating the wrong junk that's killing people, not from eating too much spinach. So it's really just a distraction. We have to stop distracting ourselves with theoretical problems that might come from eating a lot of spinach and actually focus on the real problem, which is that people are malnourished and they're chronically ill and it's killing them. 